Recently, someone presented to me the opinion, or the assumption, that it's not forbidden to pay interest, it's only forbidden to take interest, claiming that there's nothing in the Quran that would indicate that it's forbidden to pay interest. I wanted to take a moment and address this issue because I think it's something that all of you should be concerned about. There are several texts in the Quran, as well as in the Sunnah, that indicate that it is forbidden to both pay as well as take interest. So it is forbidden to be a creditor at interest and it is forbidden to be a debtor at interest. It's forbidden to take a loan with interest and it's forbidden to issue a loan with interest. Why is that? Because essentially when you loan out money, you are being rewarded for something that you have no liability for and that is the underlying economic activity. So you're actually making money off of economic activity that you have not participated in in any way, shape, or form. That said, the Quran actually addresses this in two chief places. First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ittaqu allaha wa dharu ma baqiya min riba O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and leave off whatever is left of riba. Now, this was addressed to both the creditors and the debtors that happened to live in the Meccan area and the surrounding areas that were involved in loaning each other money to the extent that when some of the creditors came to the tribe of Ben al and asked, hey, we need you to pay up. We need you to pay the interest that you owe us. They said, Wallahi ma nu'ti riba fil Islam wa qad wada'ahu anil mu'mineen. We swear by Allah, we won't pay any riba as long as Allah has forgiven it from the believers, as long as Allah has absolved the believers from that. So first and foremost, this verse includes both creditors and debtors. Secondly, the claim that the Quran only speaks or does not speak about giving interest is methodologically problematic in that Islam is not only based on the texts of the Quran. Why am I mentioning this? Very important point. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whatever you give of riba to increase amongst other people's wealth, then it does not increase with Allah. Now, there are two positions amongst classical scholars about this verse. The majority of scholars saying that this was actually speaking about gifts and awards that people were giving to gain favor from one another. And so it actually doesn't have to do with debt that's being charged on gains that are being taken from defaulted or issued debt. So it's not an issue of you know, taking an interest rate on debt. It's that I've given money to someone hoping to gain favor with them, and I'm really not doing that for the sake of Allah. Now that said, that is found amongst the scholars of Tafsir. The second approach, however, is that yes, this actually does pertain to giving riba, to paying riba, to other people, and Imam al-Baghawi mentions that in his tafsir. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because if you take a Quran-only approach to trying to explain the rules of riba, then you cannot explain away this verse. Because anytime you apply a context to it that fits your interpretation, you need to justify that context. Linguistically, the verse includes both gifts that are given to gain favor as well as interest which is paid back on a loan. Linguistically, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. It includes both. So if you are a person who only takes from the Quran, you want us to believe you, then you have to show us in the Quran where this verse is negated or where the generality of it to include both parts or both types is actually negated. And quite frankly, you can't. Additionally, from the Sunnah, there is the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is found in Sahih Muslim, that he said, Allah has cursed the one who devours riba, the one who feeds it to others, the one who transcribes it, as well as the two who witness it. Now there are some who come and say Mukilahu actually doesn't mean the person who feeds it, it means the person who's an agent. And quite frankly, this is quite far-fetched. Even if we didn't have that hadith, we have two other hadith that are quite clear about counterparties involved in, if we can say, riborious transactions, in usurious interest-based transactions, 
we have two clear hadith that actually denounce both parties. In the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam says, لا تبيع الذهب بالذهب ولا إلا مثل بمثل ولا تشف بعضها على بعض Do not sell gold for gold except like amounts for like amounts and do not increase over that. Now why is this hadith important? Because in any buy-sell transaction you have whom? You have a buyer and a seller. You have a counterparty to another counterparty. You have a creditor and a debtor. You have one who is going to be enriched and one who is going to be disenfranchised. Therefore, if you're doing money for money and you're saying that, well, it's haram for me to issue a debt for $10,000 and take back $15,000, but it's not haram for you to pay it, you're going against the meaning of this hadith as the Prophet ﷺ explicitly states that currency values have to be on par. They have to be exchanged on par. And so therefore the prohibition here of doing anything that's not on par applies to both those who take it as well as those who pay it. Additionally, there's the hadith of Abu Hurairah anhu that's also found in Sahih Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ said that tabi'u al-dhahab al-dhahab or he said al-dhahab bi-dhahab Waznan bi wazn, mithl bi mithl, wal fidda bil fidda, waznan bi wazn, mithnan bi mithl, faman zada aw istazada, faqad fahua riba. Faman zada aw istazada, fahua riba. Gold for gold, like for like, silver for silver, like for like. So whoever increases or seeks an increase, then that is riba. So therefore, the one who gives it, right, the one who gives a loan and asks for an increase, then he is included in this hadith and whoever takes it and gives an increase is included in this hadith. So the summary is that the texts of the Quran, even if we only read the Quran, prohibit both paying as well as taking riba and the text of the pure sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also invalidate this very ungracious assumption on the part of those who claim it. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad.